Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, both Edexcel and AQA students need to be able to describe the solubility of group 2 sulfates. AQA students also need to be able to describe the use of barium sulfate in medicine and how barium chloride can be used to test for sulfate ions. And finally, Edexcel students need to be able to describe group 2 carbonates and nitrates. We're going to start by looking at the solubility of group 2 sulfates. The solubility of group 2 sulfates decreases as we move down the group. Magnesium sulfate is highly soluble in water, whereas barium sulfate is insoluble. Now I should point out that you're not expected to explain the trend in solubility, but you are expected to remember it. Now the insolubility of barium sulfate makes it useful in two ways, and AQA students need to be able to describe these. Firstly, a suspension of barium sulfate is given to patients before they have an x-ray of their digestive system. This is often called a barium meal. Barium strongly absorbs x-rays, allowing doctors to visualise the patient's digestive system. And because barium sulfate is insoluble, it does not enter the patient's bloodstream. Secondly, we can use a solution of barium chloride to test for sulfate ions. Barium chloride is soluble in water. So a solution of barium chloride contains aqueous barium ions. If we mix barium chloride solution with a solution containing sulfate ions, then the barium ions and the sulfate ions form barium sulfate, which is insoluble. And the insoluble barium sulfate forms a white precipitate. So this reaction can be used to test for the presence of sulfate ions. Now there's one point about this test that you need to remember. We have to add either hydrochloric acid or nitric acid to our barium chloride solution before we test for sulfate. This is because if there were any carbonate ions present, then they will react with the barium ions. Barium carbonate is insoluble, so this would form a white precipitate, giving us a false positive test. Hydrochloric acid or nitric acid reacts with carbonate ions, forming carbon dioxide and this prevents any carbonate ions from giving us a false positive. OK, now AQA students can stop watching. Edexcel students must be able to describe group 2 carbonates and nitrates. Group 2 carbonates are essentially insoluble in water. When we heat group 2 carbonates, they undergo thermal decomposition, forming the group 2 oxide plus carbon dioxide. In contrast, Group 2 nitrates are all soluble in water. When we heat group 2 nitrates, they also undergo thermal decomposition, forming the group 2 oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So as we've seen, both group 2 carbonates and group 2 nitrates undergo thermal decomposition. Now a key fact you need to learn is that thermal decomposition requires higher temperatures as we move down group 2. In other words, moving down group 2 the carbonates and nitrates become more thermally stable. I'm showing you here a group 2 carbonate, for example magnesium carbonate. But I should point out that the following explanation also applies to group 2 nitrates. With a small metal ion such as magnesium, there's a high density of positive charge. This high charge density allows the metal ion to attract the bonding electrons in the carbonate ion. Scientists say that the metal ion has a strong polarising power. Because the bonding electrons are already partially shifted, it takes relatively little energy to break these bonds during thermal decomposition. A larger metal ion such as barium has a much lower charge density and polarising power. And because of this, the bonding electrons in the carbonate ion are less shifted towards the larger metal ion. This means that the bonds in the carbonate ion now require a higher temperature to break. And this explains why thermal decomposition requires a higher temperature as we move down group 2. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the properties of group 2 compounds.